So picture this, you're sitting at work, you're at your desk, it's 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. You've already put in five hours of solid work, you know, more annoying emails are stacking up in your inbox. So you tab over to LinkedIn, and the first post that you see is about how your coworker Chad cooked raw chicken in his hotel room because he's so dedicated to the company and every single dollar counts on the P&L. What a saint, there's nothing really psychotic about that. Then you glance down at your watch and you realize you still have three more hours until five o'clock, until that all hands meeting where Becky's gonna get her silver participation award for alignment and synergy and interdepartmental collaboration initiatives with agile project management, including her idea of coming back to the office on Fridays. Then after that meeting, you have the privilege of driving back home gridlocked for an hour. Maybe you're checking your email at red lights. You know, you gotta make sure that Quaid response to your software integration request so that your boss, Ken, doesn't schedule you a disciplinary meeting in the morning. This is what I call the golden handcuffs because it's not slavery if you're making 50 or 100 grand a year, right? I mean, spending half your waking life doing something you don't really wanna do. No, 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 there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So all jokes aside, this was me about four and a half years ago. So I was living in Austin, working in the tech industry. My entire life revolved around this company, culture, voodoo, corporate servitude world. So basically I had to get out. Now the blog that I started was really a means to an end. It wasn't like a fun project to make money. It was a way to take my freedom back. So after doing it myself, I've thought about this question a lot. Like how do you escape? How do you build a side business into the background of your life that you can actually do while you're working full time? And most importantly, what is the business model and the revenue stream to do it in the quickest time frame possible? Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover the quickest path that you can take to replace your full-time salary with a side business, exactly how to build a profit runway, and how to turn your side business into a full-time enterprise so that you can leave Chad, Becky, Quaid, and Ken behind once and for all. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my masterclass, 80 minutes of free training. Click the link in the description below, exactly how to start an online business in the 2020s. Now let's get into the topic for today. So all of us wanna build businesses so that we can leave these full-time jobs, right? That's actually time freedom to me. Was is almost more important than financial freedom in a lot of ways. But time freedom can lead to financial freedom. But ultimately, we have to ask ourselves, what is the salary equation? So what we have to do is do a little bit of math to realize how much money do we actually need to make on the side before we can take this thing full time and leave a job behind. Well, what we want to do is take your annual salary and look at it monthly. You know, so look at your monthly salary after taxes. And then we want to look at your monthly expenses. So we really need to figure out how much money do you need for a six month emergency fund, number one. Now to quit your job, you need two things. You need an emergency fund of six months at least, and you need to be making as much money as your full-time job with your side job. That is the safest way to do it. And you wanna be doing that for a couple months, like three months, not just immediately I make one month is good, so I quit immediately. Now, again, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to do any of this stuff. I'm just giving you examples here. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you make $6,000 a month. So that's like $72,000 a year. So your take home pay, assuming 75%, if you don't have really any state taxes too much, let's say your take home pay is $4,500 a month. Well, 1,500 of that might be rent or mortgage, like your housing. 700 could be a car payment and insurance. 500 maybe for utilities, 500 for random other stuff. And you're left with about $1,300 a month. This is just an example. So to be comfortable, you'd want your side business to be making this exact amount. You'd wanna be making $6,000 a month. Then you can at least cover your bills and have money left over for savings if we need to. We don't wanna do this too tight, right? So you need to be making this not just one month, but a period of months, at least like three months in a row is a good sign of things to come. Now, I'm risk averse. Again, this isn't financial advice. Only you know your own financial situation, but the power of leaving is pretty big. I mean, for me, I started my blog in January. I left in July, so seven months later I was able to quit. Now I wasn't making as much as my full-time job. My full-time job at the time I was making $120,000 a year. My blog was at like, there was months I made 11 or 12, there was months I made five early on. So I wasn't really there yet consistently, but I just made the leap. And when I made the leap and I was able to focus 100% of my time and effort on this business for myself, it's not like I just quit and didn't work, right? I kept building the business for myself. It went from like five or 10 up to $21,000 that next month because I put so much time in with things like SEO consulting, building clients, getting links. Some affiliate revenue was trickling in, but it was mainly active income. So when we're talking about this, we have to first realize like what revenue streams are the 
quickest? Which ones should we focus on? And we have to talk about active income versus passive income. So we all want to get to passive income eventually, right? Money that's not attached to your time. So you put work in, you create content, and then later you get ad revenue, affiliate revenue, maybe some sponsorships, course sales, things like that that aren't really attached to your time. Now that's the ultimate goal, right? Getting our time back. But we have to focus on active income at the beginning because we can't just sit back, relax, and hope that affiliate revenue solves all of our problems or that ad revenue is gonna be the savior and let us quit our job. We have to make money now. Like a business runs on revenue now, not six or nine months from now. We have to actually make money. So this is the biggest hurdle. Most people give up early on because this money isn't guaranteed. They don't see any from affiliate marketing for like six months or nine months. They don't know what they're doing exactly. They can't build this on the side of a full-time job. They're only focused on building this passive income thing and it isn't guaranteed. So ultimately we need to do what most people aren't doing. So we need to focus on active income at the beginning with the goal of getting to passive income later. And it's, it's true, like if we're really thinking about we wanna build a business, I get this question a lot and it's like, well, I can't afford this tool or I can't do this thing. If we're treating this like a business, you know, some people don't wanna spend $3 a month on web hosting and they go to like wordpress.com or some free host or a blogger account. It's like, look, if you wanna start a business, you have to realize that businesses cost money to start. Now, online businesses are way cheaper than a traditional brick and mortar business. There's no inventory, employees, buildings, codes that we have to follow, like a food business or something like that. Profit margins are also a lot higher. You know, a blogging business, a content driven business, profit margins can be like 90% versus maybe six or 7% in the food industry. If you wanna build an online business, today's video is brought to you by our favorite WordPress host, and that is WPX. So when you build something online, you need a WordPress website. Now, most premium WordPress hosting can get expensive, but WPX is hooking you up for Black Friday. So if you sign up for a monthly plan, they're offering a one, two, three plan where you pay just one, two, or $3 for the first two months, depending on which plan you choose. So this way you're getting up to 98% off hosting when you get started. Now, if you don't need to start your site today, but you wanna lock this in for the future, for Black Friday, WPX is also offering a buy now, use later deal. So whenever you buy one of their annual plans, you get four months free and you can activate your plan within six months of the purchase date whenever you want. So make sure to check out these WPX Black Friday offers before they end. They'll be gone before you know it. So click the WPX link in the description below to get started. So businesses need revenue and they need it quickly. When it comes to making money quickly and different revenue streams, we have to know what these revenue streams are. And we have to realize that there actually is one that works really well at the beginning before we're working on all this passive income but we can actually get this active income while we're building the passive income machine at the same time. So this is really important. Like we wanna make money now, we wanna make it fast. So we focus on active income while building passive income in the background at the same time. Now this business model is also infinitely pivotable, infinitely scalable, and it makes the most sense at the beginning. So when we think about the timeline of different revenue streams, there's affiliate ads, sponsorship courses, all of this stuff. Well, what makes sense isn't just to have a blanket approach and say, I'm going to do all of them, right? We can't shift. We have to shift our focus to kind of one at a time. Now, affiliate revenue is good because it dictates our content strategy. We write these articles to rank and make more money than we can make with just ads. Sponsorships are good, but they require actually ranking for stuff. So we can't get those out of the gate. Courses are good and coaching and stuff like that, like courses, but you have to actually have an audience to sell it to first, which doesn't quite makes sense when traffic is zero. So there's a simple math equation. Lots of traffic down the line, well, you can make less per visitor, right? Ads, affiliate marketing. So it's like high traffic plus low price product equals a medium outcome. But when we're just starting, we have like no traffic or very low traffic. We need a higher priced thing if we're gonna actually make a medium sized income. So the end goal I think in blogging is to have like three to four revenue streams, affiliate ads, sponsorships, and co your own course, your own email list that you own, a website you own, the email list that you own, and you're selling your own product. Now to get there, it takes time. It can take a year or two to actually have enough bandwidth to build an audience, create a video course or coaching program and do it effectively. Affiliate marketing is kind of the stopgap because we're not selling our own product. We're just helping promote other people's products. So there's no fulfillment on our side. There's no shipping or anything. Thing. We're just sending traffic. If we take it one step back further to the very, very beginning, what we can be doing is focusing on active income, selling simple services. So this is still attached to our time, but simple services where you can make hundreds and thousands of dollars by trading your expertise and time and selling services to other brands who are a little bit further ahead than you 
is the best first path. So let's talk about SEO consulting or simple services in a nutshell. So we have to go from full-time worker to freelancer to passive income. That's basically the past. So this consultant, this middle ground, where you're kind of, you don't have all of your time freedom back, but you can choose your hours, you can do what you want, and you can work with who you want. This consulting freelancer model is kind of the first step of getting out of your job. It's the first rung on the ladder. And what's really good is if you're doing SEO consulting and content marketing consulting, work like that for other bigger brands, and you have expertise, and we can learn this really fast, you don't have to be an expert, well, you can make a lot more money faster. So when we think about SEO services, we can also do this stuff for other brands while we're building the passive income machine for our blog. So we can do content marketing and audits and content briefs and some content writing for a brand while we're doing it for our own blog. And this actually speeds up and scales the entire process because if you're making a few thousand dollars in consulting revenue, you can funnel that into hiring a writer, hiring a writer immediately, not waiting for affiliate revenue. And then that writer can write for your clients and write for your own blog and write guest posts and do all of these things. So it speeds up your path to passive income. The more active income you do, the quicker you start making money, the quicker you can funnel it into making passive income. It's really that simple. So when we're talking about SEO services, it's actually really simple. And I have other videos on my channel. I have it in Blog Growth Engine, all kinds of stuff about SEO services and how it's really actually a lot simpler than you think. But what can you offer as an SEO you know, consultant? Well, one hand, the easy thing is there's content writing. So there's freelance writing. If you're doing it for your own blog, you can do it for someone else. So that's things like actually writing blog posts. Then there's things like content briefs. So maybe you don't write the entire article, but you send a content brief to their writing team and they write it. So you're giving them like a two, one to two page piece of information with the title, the keywords they're going after, some good statistics and things to use, summary of what the intro should cover cover a few, you know, good external links, just some pieces of information. So that's content briefs, which you can charge a good amount of money for, and they take a lot less time, or you could have a writer do it. Or there's link building. So if you're doing guest blogging, I, this is an entire setup and system you can create where you're doing guest blogging for yourself, you're getting backlinks to your own blog, and then you're also sending links to clients and doing it that way. So a lot of content marketing agencies do both. They do content and they do link building. There's also content strategy. So actually doing keyword research, topical mapping, things that brands need a little bit more high leverage and more important. So that's like knowing how to do keyword research, which I have tons of video on that, it's really easy. Knowing how to do keyword research, knowing how to do some content auditing, seeing if content needs to be like updated, for example, maybe their blog posts suck and they need to be updated. Maybe they need to publish more content. Maybe they can delete some pages. So a bigger content strategy works. So there's really like two types of consulting. There's like the time-based work stuff. You're just doing the work, like freelance writing, you're just writing. But then there's the process-based consulting where you're doing content strategy, keyword research, building their content calendar. The process-based stuff, you can charge a lot more money for because it's more strategic and it actually takes less time. So when you think about it, you're building a blog, you have it at your name or a personal brand or something broad. And when you think about that menu navigation at the top, what do you typically see? Well, you can see the blog post, you can see about somebody, how to contact them. And then there's other revenue streams up there. You might see a blogger has like speaking engagements or you might see services that they offer. So if you offer services, you put it on your blog. You know, you don't even need any traffic for this type of strategy. You can do LinkedIn posts. You can have, you know, build up an email outreach database to reach out to companies, specifically like software companies are the ones that really need help with this and actually have a lot of money to spend on SEO. So there's a really big strategy here. And since you're already doing all of this when you're blogging, you're already doing the content writing, SEO, publishing stuff, doing link building, you can go into Blog Growth Engine or a blogging course, learn exact, the exact process to do this stuff, become better than 99% of content marketers out there, and then you simply just start building clients with a simple outreach process. So that actually accelerates the path to passive income because you're building thousands of dollars early on. You can keep that money if you want, or you can funnel it into your first writer, which can accelerate the whole process of growing your blog, elevating you to a business owner, not just a tortured writer. So here's exactly what you should do. You know, when I first started my blog, I put it at adamanfroy.com. I thought it would be a digital resume. I thought it would be, maybe it'll just get me a better job or it'll showcase some of my writing skills, which I didn't really have or maybe I'll make a little bit of affiliate revenue, but I just treated it as a digital resume. I didn't know that it would become what it became, but it did because I had the freedom to pivot. I could just keep creating stuff in my own name and I didn't have to worry about you know a tiny niche site or something like that. And you want to have this ultimate freedom to pivot your content strategy, your direction, the services you're offering. If you have a personal brand, just get the domain of yourself or you can do, a, you know, if you don't want to use your full name, you can use something like, I could have been like adamsadvice.com or adamsguide, like kind of like Tom's 
systems guide or something. But I still recommend just put it at your name, makes it simpler, makes it attached to your identity, makes it something you probably won't quit. And you can use something like WPX for that. So that's the best web host in my opinion, best site speed, good chat support. You set up a website, WPX with WordPress.org. Really simple. You create five articles in a niche. You can use a content assembly process. You can check out other videos on my channel on exactly how to write the perfect blog post. But finding your niche is important. I have videos on keyword research as well and how to do that. If you really want to leave that job, you need to really think about this freelance consulting simple services strategy. So ultimately, you start that after immediately, once your website's up. Technically, again, you don't even need a website, you just need an outreach strategy, but a website can help. So you, first you need visibility for a consulting business. And you're not gonna get any visibility at first from a blog, right? You just publish some articles, you have a homepage. No one's gonna see this for months, probably, unless you just master keyword research and find some crazy keywords that you start ranking for immediately. Typically it doesn't happen for a brand new domain. So you can send people to your website, but you have to do it with active income. So you're doing your own email outreach. You're doing maybe LinkedIn outreach. If you, you don't have to do LinkedIn, it's mainly, this is mainly all email. And definitely make sure to watch my other video. I'm not gonna cover it all in this one, but there's like strategies for email outreach where it's really simple. You are a blogger. You send general kind of content collaboration emails to different software companies and sites that are in your niche or just general software companies, if you wanna go super broad. And you open yourself up, you say, hey, so-and-so, my name is this, and here's, I'm a blogger. You can also add like a professional experience in there, just kind of your unique value proposition. And you can say, you kind of keep this content collaboration thing open. You say, I write guest posts, I'd like to write one for you, or would you like to collaborate on content? Looking forward to hearing back. And you keep it kind of broad, like you're just trying to build a relationship. And what tends to happen is you get three main benefits. You get guest posts that you can write, and accept it. You can get link partnerships. Maybe they don't accept a guest post, but they're like, let's work together. We can link to each other and do some link building. And three, you get actual clients. So if they say, no, you know, we don't do guest posts, but you do them or do you do SEO for other things? And they say, yes, I actually offer SEO services. So it's a simple non-salesy approach to selling through email where you never even have to get on the phone and you're just charging for simple SEO services, showcasing your expertise. So the visibility at first isn't gonna come from blog traffic or funneling people to a lead magnet or something like that. It's gonna come from active outreach outreach. It's going to come from you learning the SEO skills you need to learn, putting yourself out there and sending emails to people to build real relationships and get clients. So let's talk about some goals here. So your goal should be to make $5,000 a month by month three. So that could be one client. It could be one SEO client. We have plenty of blog growth engine students that are making over that with one client. One got, you know, 27,000 bucks to create some type of sales funnel. One got over 7,000 from one client to do content marketing consulting. You know, it might be a little bit scary. You might have some imposter syndrome at first because you're like, I haven't really done this before. Like, well then you have to get comfortable with it. So that's why in the three month goal of getting there, month one is all learning. So you just want to take the processes that we teach, that bloggers teach, you know, learn SEO, content marketing, how to do this stuff. The first month is basically all learning because you need to feel comfortable with this stuff. We don't want to be like, I'm going to do link building for you, or I'm going to do, you know, I'm gonna do some content writing for you and you've never done it yourself. So that's why step one is all learning for your own website, which is why we have a blog in the first place. So get comfortable creating a content assembly process, doing keyword research, writing your own articles, knowing how to update articles, getting decent at SEO, spend an entire month doing just that. And then month two, you can focus on accelerating that further. Make sure your website's optimized, get the site up and running, write more articles, start doing a little bit of link building, just get your feet wet in some of these different things that I talk about in my uh, other consulting videos. And then month three, that's when you can start your outreach process and start generating sales. So that's when you can send simple email outreach messages for content collaborations with the goal of getting guest posts, building relationships, and getting a few clients. So with this strategy, you open yourself to up to a lot of different revenue streams to leave your full-time job because you have a website which you own. It's not like a TikTok account or an Instagram that can go buy buy some algorithm thing. You own the website with your own hosting. You can eventually get to all kinds of different passive income streams like affiliate marketing, ads, sponsorships, courses, all of that. But we want to start, if you want to make money immediately and like you're like, I need to leave my job. My boss is driving me insane. I can't spend another day here. Well, then affiliate revenue is not really the right answer. Like you can build it in the, at the same time 
but you need to look at your website as a whole and all of the different revenue streams. And if you want to make money faster, you sell simple services. So this could even be, you know, I talk about SEO services, which is the easiest one because you learn it month one, you do it for your own website, which you're need, you want to learn anyways, because you know, that's the way to get to passive income. Or alternatively, maybe you are an expert in something. Maybe you're an author, a book writer, then you can charge for one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So you can do that immediately. Send email outreaches, build a LinkedIn profile if you want to and do it that way. Or maybe you're an interior designer and you can do consulting. Ultimately, you need to build this as a business. Right, which can't just be this thing where we sit behind a computer and dream about passive income that we're not gonna ever work. So take your unique strengths and do services. SEO, if you wanna learn it, blogging, which I recommend you learn anyways because it's a super valuable skill to have and it will you know, last you for a lifetime. Or take the skills you already have and build a website, create a page for your services, one-on-one -on -one coaching, charge per hour that way. You can do either one, but you really need to build an online business for yourself and no one else. And know that all the money that you make can eventually be funneled into more content, another writer, an outreach specialist. So when I first started with this approach, it was great because I did a lot of SEO consulting for brands first. That was my first revenue stream. I hired my first writer by month three. Before that, I was writing everything myself. I hired an outreach assistant by month six. And with just those two people, at the end, I think of 2020, I was making 70 or $80,000 a month with my blog from consulting, mainly affiliate revenue, because I was able to take that writer and funnel them into writing for my own blog so I could kind of be a business owner. I didn't have to write everything myself, but I would dictate the strategy. So I would say, hey, outreach Outreach assistant, do outreach to these sites to build relationships, to get links for clients and our own guest posts. Hey, writer, here's the next 10 articles you're going to write. Here's what you have to do. So that elevates you to a business owner. The only way I could have done that initially was through actually selling services and consulting. If I had waited for affiliate revenue, it still would have worked. It would just would have taken a lot longer. You know, I remember I started trickling like Bluehost affiliate revenue and some online course and podcast revenue by month nine, but I would have been writing everything myself and there would have been instead of making like $100,000 in my blog's first year, which was primarily consulting revenue, it probably would have been more like 20 or something like that just from affiliate revenue. So it's a way to grow faster and it's a way to accelerate your path to passive income and quit your job a lot faster. So ultimately we have to think about the math equation to replacing your salary. So take your salary, take your expenses, know how much money you need per month, and then that is your golden star, the number you need to get to. So if you're making $5,000 a month in your job, that could just be one SEO client. So think about getting two, right? Getting to $10,000 a month, but we need to do that. Or it could be $2,500 from an SEO client, another you know, $1,000 from your blog, affiliate marketing and ad revenue, and then that starts growing and you get that to $5,000 a month. And you wanna do that consistently for a few months before you think about leaving the job. But ultimately, again, I just stress, I want people to build businesses because the only path to making life-changing money isn't necessarily in a career. Now, you may love your job, but this, none of this may apply to you, right? But if you're a person like me, who was slightly dissatisfied with what they were doing half their waking life, then I think it makes sense to try to develop an exit plan because putting all your eggs in the job basket sounds a little bit risky to me. So if you're interested in learning more, how to get started, make sure to click the link in the description below, sign up for that masterclass, covers how to start a blogging business in the 2020s. Let me know what you think. You know, some of the intro is a little bit funny and weird, but I appreciate your feedback. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.